from the nation's capital, this is the Fly Fishing Consultant Podcast with your host, Rob Snowett. Thanks for downloading the Fly Fishing Consultant Podcast. This is Series 1, Episode 96. Now, the last one I said was 96. It was really 95. This is uh, some interviews from the Project Clean Water's 4th Annual Tiathon at the Marine Corps Museum in Virginia. It's a pretty cool venue if you've never been. It's even more cool to tie next to all these exhibits underneath a giant atrium. This all started several years ago by Ray Sinclair, a local angler, and now Ski Bomb out west. And he started this at his church, and now it's expanded. And yesterday, over 1,700 flies were tied to be distributed throughout the country. The Quantico and Fort Belvoir programs of Project Healing Waters hosted their fourth annual fly tying marathon in the main gallery of the National Museum of the Marine Corps yesterday, Saturday, March 18th. It started at 9 a.m. and ended at 5 p.m. Flies created at the event are going to be distributed to programs across the nation for use at fly fishing events throughout the year. Fly tires signed up for two shifts, 9 to 1 and 1 to 5, or you could do both shifts. Uh, suggested flies were buggers, hare's ears, prince nymphs, muddler minnows, half and half surf candies, deceivers, clousers, copper jaunts, pheasant tails, poppers, slump busters, Gurgle bugs, whistlers, elk hair caddis, royal wolves, coronamids, midges, soft tackles, and nymphs. And you're going to learn that more than just those patterns were tied. And I decided to do pink worms because I could knock out a bunch beforehand and tie some there and still have time to go around and interview people. I used the Spike Easy from, or Spike Ease from Michaels. And I just made hot pink worms on barbless uh, healing shack. I'm not, uh, barbless fly shack hooks. It's been a long day, folks. Um, so we're going to listen to some of the interviews now. They're mostly brief. They were round tables, so I would just go around the table and ask everybody questions. Thanks again to the Marine Corps Museum for hosting this. And I don't know who provided lunches for everybody, but that was awesome. And uh, let's do this. All right, you want to introduce yourself? What are you tying today? My name is Joseph Wallen. I'm tying some olive woolly buggers. Anything special about your buggers? No, it's pretty generic. I'm kind of new. I'm still learning them. How long have you been tying? Roughly about a year. Quite accomplished at this point. I guess. I think so. Try to be anyway. How do you like those scissors? They're uh. They're pretty good. I mean, it took some getting used to. They're kind of stiff at first. I like them. Nice and sharp. Oh, yeah. How far is your drive up here today? About an hour and 50 minutes. I'm uh, about 45 minutes east of Richmond, so take a little hike. All right. Just doing buggers today? Yeah, maybe a couple clousers later on. I kind of got home late last night and got everything thrown in a tote here. How'd you bring that whole bin in? On my shoulder. I towed it on up here. <laughs> you got to get wheels. Put a skateboard under it. Yeah. Need to have a, another little kid just drag yeah. it on up here. That's what they're for. So. All right. Where all do we right, find your uh, Instagram? Uh, Joe Wallen. There you go. All right. Let's go talk to the paparazzi over here. All right. So uh, do you want to introduce you? Uh, Introduce yourself and tell us what your role here is at the uh, Two Fly. I'm here to support uh, Project Healing Waters Quantico and the wonderful Marine Corps Museum. Uh, my brother works here and a uh, longtime fly fisherman. And I uh, wanted to visit and see some friends here and network a little bit. And I also uh, wanted to donate a few flies for the cause. I'm not really a, f a fly tire, but I'm, I like to fly fish. You got your camera today? Yes. Yeah, I'm here. I, I, I'm a freelance writer. I, I write for the uh, Culpeper Times out in Culpeper, Virginia. All right. And if anybody wants to hire you for uh, an article or something, where can they find you? 
culpepertimes.com. Uh, you can find me on there. All my stuff's online. I also read a column. Uh, any any type of fishing story, I'm always always okay with that. If it includes doing a little fishing on the rivers. All right. Any social media people can follow you on? Uh, just Facebook. That's all I'm really doing right now. All right. Marshall Connor. Vamos United. You got it. Barrow Bravo. We got a. a- <laughs> all-star table here let's start off with richie what's going on what's up richie farino from district angling you're soon to be new again old again fly shop in the northern virginia washington dc metro area it's gonna be awesome we are looking forward to it yeah, it's gonna be fun uh, a lot of people sort of wishing they had their uh their go-to fly shop and place to hang out and we're uh, looking forward to getting it set up again hopefully looking for the first maybe the second week of may Fantastic. What are you tying up here today? Uh, just banging out clouser minnows, uh, just standard white stuff. It's stuff that I know how to tie. I could pretty much bang out a clouser in about three minutes or so. I'm just uh, trying to tie as many as I can. This is a, a day to tie quantity and quality, just sort of get as many flies with these guys as possible. And it's one of the things I've had a tie production in the shop for a long time and want to make sure I get as many as possible for these guys. And you just got some pretty good light to tie in about a second The ago. sun came up over my shoulder as soon as you showed up. Looks like you're bringing the sunshine. Yeah. What do you call this little uh, fly holder here? Uh, which one? Oh, it's just a... It's two small clips with bead chain epoxy to it. It's basically just a uh, little little hanger. I use it to uh, put glue on some of the, the fly heads and just kind of let them hang uh, when I'm finished so I don't get uh, glue all over the table. It looks like you got some new stickers for people. I do. Got some cool stuff that will be available uh, at the film tour and on the website and just some some local stuff. We got some more coming out. Fantastic. Cool. All right, and where can we find you online? Uh, so if you go to districtangling.com, uh, you'll see the website there. There's uh, fishing reports. There's a blog section. We try not to be too political, but uh, we try to keep uh, the local public informed of what's going on the uh, in the area. As well as uh, shopping side, which we're gonna we're gonna expand a little bit more in the next uh, couple of weeks. Awesome! Thanks so much. All right, flies by two brothers. Which one are you? Mason, one right. half. What are you tying up today? Pheasant tails. Right Anything particular you do in your pheasant tails? There's actually a t- I watched a YouTube video a few years ago. There was a specific fly tire who actually only used two batches of pheasant tail instead of three because normally you have a tail, a body, and then the wing case, but he used one batch for the tail and the body. So you you cut a bit and then you tie it down, but instead of clipping the excess off, you tie it back a little bit and then keep wrapping it instead of, so it just saves a bit of material and time. I'm gonna have to try one of his soft tackles over here. Is that in? <laughs> sure. You put a soft tackle on the pheasant tail, it changes things. Yes, I've seen those. You guys will be down at the show this year? Virginia show? Yes, certainly. Certainly. Third How year in a row. Nice. How many years left until uh, college? Gosh, well, it depends. You know, you never know with right. college. They're getting rocking. big. I don't know what you're feeding these two, but <laughs> you guys are bigger than last year. All right, let's go see what your brother's up to. All right, you want to introduce yourself again? Hi, I'm Palmer. And what are you tying up today? I just tied um, some... Uh, cotton candy worms, and now I'm tying some black crystal buggers. I thought you were going to bring the tall vice today. <laughs> you have to sit on a couple phone books. Yeah, Do you know I what know. Phone book is? Yes. Okay, let's check it. All right. Hey, what color S tabs you got going on? I have some. Uh, it's it's a mix between black and uh, green. Yeah. Where can we find you guys on your social media? Uh, we're Facebook and uh, Instagram. We started doing Instagram about. Four months ago. All right. I'll find you on there. Yes, thank you. Super. All right, guys. I don't want to disrupt you anymore. Keep on tying. I'm uh, Red Bordage, and I'm just tying some mop flies at the moment. Tied a few plowsers before. Any particular mop fly color you prefer? These gray ones seem to, grayish brown seem to work pretty good. And and what's I, your source for the material? Uh, generally Walmart. Okay. <laughs> and just try and... I use various types of hackle and whatever on them just to get some movement. and it, They're quick, simple. And they work? And they work. There you go. So, um, Is this your first time tying here? No. I think third time I've been here okay. um, with the Rapid End Chapter at TU, and we tried to support this. Fantastic. Yeah. So, you need to go play with some trains after work? 
Uh, I'm not really a train guy. <laughs> so. Well, let's go talk to Al. We'll finish off the table over here. How are things going? Hey, doing great. Thank you. How about you? Do you want to introduce yourself? Well, I'm tying a Japanese uh, Kabiri, a uh, reverse soft hackle fly for Tenkara fishing. And a reverse uh, vice there, too. Yeah, yep. So lefty? Say again? You yeah, a lefty? It's uh, set up for lefties. It's a regal. That's why I have a regal. It's easiest to set up for a lefty. And you've got the uh, Healing Waters medallion in there. Yeah, yeah, I got this through uh, the uh, Quantico chapter. Fantastic. I uh, pa- guided a bit in the past, as you know, seeing you in the water. Yep. Yeah. So these are strictly for mountain streams, and I chase uh, brook trout with them. And by the way, if you look into soft hackle, you'll find in Britain they call these spider flies. Even though in Japan, same thing. All right. What size hook do you tie those on? Say again? What size hook? Well, I, I favor the uh, 10s, 12s, 14s. Okay. But uh, some people go even smaller than that. I find a 12 to 14 is good for mountain streams, Jeremy's Run, Piney, North Thornton, you know, for brook trout. Fantastic. Yeah. All right. Well, thanks for uh, showing up today. Hey, and uh, thanks for uh, guiding the uh, two fly. I'll Absolutely. see you. Up there. Absolutely. All right. Let's hope it's warm and not rainy this year. Yeah, me too. <laughs> All right. Thanks, Al. Okay. All right, George, you want to introduce yourself? Sure. Uh, name is George Gaines. I am the National Capital Regional Coordinator for Project Healing Waters, Fly Fishing, Inc. Uh, I uh, coordinate and support six programs, including the two that are sponsoring the fly tying marathon today, the Quantico, and the Fort Belvoir program. If people don't know, do you want to just give the brief overview of what's going on today? Yeah, uh, it uh, is where we uh, get volunteer fly tires to come together and spend a day uh, in a fly tying marathon, literally uh, trying to tie as many uh, very good flies as we can come up with because these Flies are then uh, sent out to the uh, many Project Healing Waters programs across the country. We have over 225 different Project Healing Waters programs around the country. We're in every state, also uh, active in Australia, Canada, Germany, uh, and uh, Puerto Rico. And last year, this event Uh, and a couple of other smaller ones that fed into it tied over 7,000 flies that were distributed to, I think, something like 86 different programs around the country so that our uh, disabled vets and active military that are in the programs have flies that they can go fishing with. Fantastic. Let's say there's a listener who wants to tie some flies and donate them how would they go about doing that well the best way would be to contact uh, either the Quantico program Marty uh, and uh, actually I guess uh, the easiest way to for somebody who is not in any way connected uh, would be to go to our website which is just projecthealingwaters.org org and there is a listing of all of our programs and connect with the Quantico program or the Fort Belvoir program and that would be the best way to make the connection. Any particular style of fly, colors, barb versus barbless? No, uh, barbless are the ones that primarily are used in our programs but Um, Any fly of any kind uh, can be used somewhere. We have programs that do a lot of saltwater fishing, uh, all all kinds of fishing. So almost any kind of fly is helpful and appreciated. Fantastic. All right, George, thanks for your time. Sure. Thanks for helping organize all this. Right, thank you. All right, let's start off with Mark. What's going on? Uh, Not too much. Just tying these sort of uh, streamers with uh, Chickaboo. And some uh, estaz and glass beads on them, mostly for trout, but they ought to be good for sundry panfish. And uh, it's nice to come down here, see the museum while we're at it, and uh, 
I don't know, be a podcast star for Rob Snow White. There you go. And and what's your um, holder there for your chickaboo? That's a little unorthodox. Uh, it used to be a... Uh, I think it was a McCormick, McCormick or um, Costco spice bottle. But it's actually pretty good for storing my massive chickaboo in here, although it means I have to spread the stuff all over the table, and it's getting messy already. Can you explain what chickaboo is if people don't know? Well, chickaboo is essentially the marabou, the really fluffy underfeathers from chickens and roosters and it's got short stems uh, it doesn't wind well if you want to use it as hackle it's basically good for using as tails or as wings but to palmer it on a fly that's not going to work none of them are really long enough and the shafts of the feathers are way too uh, get thick too quickly to actually be able to wind them on but you can also use them for like uh some of the pieces for like gills on smallish nymphs on say longer shank hooks and um, I like this stuff it's kind of fun to play with right. don't sneeze near it no not at all yeah I should have brought a big roll of masking tape to pick all this stuff up when I'm done well, thanks for uh, telling us what you're doing and thanks for showing up today no problem alright so Luke what are you tying up I guess these would be brown trout, uh, brown trout, sort of stock brown trout imitation streamers. Uh, B10S hook is what I always use. Clumps of uh, marabou in the back, just a little longer than the shank itself. And then I'm spinning, I'm tying on at the same time. Uh, some palmer chenille, and I guess this would be copper or bronze. And um, spinning it with some, uh, with some schloppen that's either straight white or uh, a little off white. And just spinning them and wrapping them, and uh, you get sort of a little kind of very small brown trout kind of look-alike streamer. Putting weight on pretty some. Pretty filthy looking. Pretty pretty ugly, pretty yeah, dirty. I think but, it'll uh, look uh, nice in the water. I think it'll look okay in the water. Yeah, and, uh, I like the blend of the natural and the synthetic in there. It's easy to tie, so. Right on. Is that a Drake's coffee cake? It is a... I, I know, know a certain mailman that has an affinity for those. It is a coffee hat. <laughs> I couldn't tell you. I don't know. I don't think it's Drake's, though. I think I would know that. So, yeah, glad to be here. All right. Fantastic. Where can we follow you online with all your monster flies? Instagram, Fly Guy Luke T. There we go. Look all at right. that. I got the Snow White shout out. Woo-hoo. Wow. All right. Let's go see who else we can interview now. And go get Richie again. We talk talk cooking with Richie. Yeah. At this is why I'm fat. <laughs> <laughs> All right. All right, hold on, ready? Perfect. All right, so you want to introduce yourself? Hey, I'm Fran McVeigh from Quantico Project Healing Waters. And we're here today with other Project Healing Water groups and volunteers tying flies for fly fishermen and women around the country who are members of Project Healing Waters. We'll tie several thousand flies today and distribute them for veterans, active duties, and folks associated with Project Killing Waters. What pattern are you tying up today? Well, I'm tying up the Travis uh, small minnow pattern that he's created. Travis is on my left, but uh, we've tied uh, all kinds of flies, traditionals and uh, modern, uh, the San Juan worm. Pete, what have you tied today? Orange. My name is Pete Robertson. Today I'm tying what we call an orange and partridge soft hackle. It represents a dead insect floating in the water. It's a classic one. Yes. It's pretty standard for 100 years. And we have several other people who can tell you what they're tying around the table yeah, as let's, well. Let's go around the table. Travis, what, you want to talk about what you're tying? And Don, right? you want to introduce yourself. I'm Travis Vandenberg. Uh, I'm a participant in Project Healing Waters uh, and I'm just tying a basically modified foam minnow. Um, yeah. All right. And where, so you're based out here right now? Yep. Where's home? Uh, originally Minnesota. Wow. All right. That's far. And cold? Mm, it's good not fish. bad. Musky? Yeah. Yeah, got a lot of good uh, game fish back home. So. Nice. 
All right. Well, thanks for coming out today and helping tie flies. Another left-handed regal. Yep. All right. Anybody else want to? There we go. This, this table is nice and talkative. What are we tying up today? My name's Don Miller. I'm uh, a volunteer at Project Healing Waters. I'm a civilian volunteering, and today I'm tying a rainbow warrior. There we it's go. A small midge pattern. Yeah, we had Lance Egan on the podcast about a month ago. Interesting. Have you fished them before? No, I haven't. I, we're going to tie those that are beer tie someday soon because apparently they're just crazy effective. That's why I'm tying them. Absolutely. All right. Well, thank I'll you fish, very much. I'll be fishing them in a couple weeks. Whereabouts? Uh, I don't know. Maybe Rose River or depends on where the weather is and where, where I feel like going. I feel bad for the weather people here now. They can't predict anything. It's crazy. <laughs> well, All right. You just know that they predict the opposite of what's really going to be. It should be weather, W-H-E-T. Yeah, they just they just jazzed up to uh, try to sell the broadcast, keep you coming back, making it worse than it's really going to be. All right. We'll keep moving down the line. Thanks for showing up today. You want to do a little, little interview? Sure. All right. You are? I'm Randy Rube, and I'm uh, with Quantico and Fort Belvoir. Project Killing Waters uh, programs, and I'm tying a hippie stomper, which is an attractor pattern uh, that really works well in pocket water. Okay. With a, uh, it's designed to float like a cork, and it's nice to uh, hang another, you know, midge pattern or an emerger or a small uh, mayfly pattern un- underneath and fish it in pocket water, and it works like a champ. Nice, big, floaty, and easy to see. Yeah. Exactly mm-hmm. what we need today. That's Is that it. moose hair? Moose hair tail and uh, and a, and a uh, hen hackle collar and everything else is foam and uh, and uh, uh, that's a nice hackle. Uh, Fleshaboo. Fantastic. So, yeah, and legs and rubber legs. Oh, can't really have enough rubber legs. legs. Yeah. Okay. So it's fun. And is that a USB charged lamp? It is. You like that? I do. Who makes that one? Uh, I got that one from. Uh, uh, the device company, the uh, Regal Vice, okay. sells it. I got a Regal Vice at home, uh, and I, when I bought it, I, I bought that light too, and it works really well. It's good for uh, good to, to uh, see sunlight. You know, it's, it's like sunlight when you're looking at the colors yeah. and whatnot. And that's it's weird that we actually have sunlight. I'm not used to tying yeah. this natural oh, yeah. light in here. I thought about blinded. I'm yeah, go ahead and get my dark glasses. It comes and goes. Sometimes you need sunglasses. Sometimes right. it's nice to charge up my. Uh, <laughs> I should charge up my, uh, my uh, solar power thing there. That's pretty cool. Yeah, solar power. Just charge it. I might have to get one of those. All right. Well, thank you for your time and uh, your resources today. Yeah. Yeah, one more probably. All right. We're going to go around the table. How are you doing today? I'm well. What are we tying up? Well, introduce yourself. So my name is Keith Burba. I'm a volunteer here with Project Healing Waters at Quantico. I'm tying up a bait fish pattern, olive and white that I'm making out of stacked Super Kraken dubbing. Uh, mix in a little bit of uh, a rainbow red uh, a really crystal, neat crystal flash. And, take a look uh, at that. Certainly, here you go. Well, you For this stuff. Yeah, so that yeah. is uh, the Aura Red Northern Lights uh, I'm not sh- flash I'm, from Fly Tires Dungeon. Fly Tires Dungeon, okay. Yep. In fact, all the materials I'm using today are, came from Fly Tires Dungeon, using the Super Olive uh, Super Kraken dubbing and then the enhanced, the White Enhanced Kraken dubbing. Fantastic. And again, it's just a stacked mineral pattern, uh, white and olive, or olive and white. And these are great patterns. You can use them for just about any species of uh, fish that we have around here. Warm water, trout. Uh, can even get into some of the larger uh, bass and pike with this, depending upon their uh, their habitat. So, thanks for tying those up today. Yeah, no, great being here. Fantastic cause and a wonderful event. All right, Phil, how's it going? Uh, it's any better? I couldn't stand it. Yeah. <laughs> What are you tying up today? I'm tying uh, flies for uh, the Back Creek trip coming up in uh, April and uh, October. This is a fly we call a red ass. Uh, it's a, a version of a British uh, soft hackle. Uh, it's proven very, very effective. Uh, we put a green, uh, we put a, a brass bead on there and a red collar and uh, drop it behind a you know, uh, a flashback here's here, nymph, and it's uh, very efficient. 
but I have others I'm going to tie. But this is what I'm just about just about done on this right now. Brass, red, peacock, and soft tackle. That's like a big Mac right there. Yeah, it is. It is. You know, yeah. And uh, it's just, that soft tackle is the, probably the key, that and the red butt on the back. Yeah. Now, uh, we've modified the fly a little bit. I, I, I added red brassy wire because the trout's, tea, the trout's uh, teeth will, um, will uh, you know, tear that up. But the, with the brassy wire, on it, it doesn't do it. So. so that's what it looks like. Fantastic. Right. right. <laughs> Thank you. Today. Right. Thanks. All right, let's right. Go down the line here. You want to talk? Hello there. How's sure. It going? Glad to. Um, time? My name is Ed Yawn, and I'm tying Dorsey's Black Beauty and a zebra midge in, in a few minutes. But this is especially uh, effective on uh, western waters, uh, South Platte River in, in Colorado, oh, yeah. and, and uh, that kind of thing. And, uh, Pat must have really good eyes uh, for the stuff he ties. <laughs> and fishes. Well, I'm tying on a number 18 uh, today just because it's easier to do. But uh, he goes into the, like 22 or 24s. But uh, they're highly effective uh, on those those western streams. And what vice are you tying on today? This is a Norlander, uh, Norlander vice that uh, I've had for 15 years and very. Very happy. It'll with just it. spin and spin. Uh, no, yeah. I, I mean I don't. It right, has it has that, it has that capacity uh, to spin. I tend to just go, you know, overhand still. Okay. Fantastic. All right. Well, thanks for tying. Very today. good. How's it going? Hi. How are you? Good. I'm gonna guess you like the stone flies because your arm. Oh, yeah. <laughs> the tattoo. So what are we tying up today? Uh, just uh, rubber legs. Uh, I'm switching to a uh, like a molting white beige color now, but banged out a few of the black ones this morning. So good pattern. Um, since we don't know where these flies are going to wind up, right? Figure it's good for trout, good for warm water species. So catch everything. Safe bet. Yep. All right. Super. Thanks. Do you want to talk about your your tattoo for those who can't see? Oh, <laughs> well, it's a yeah, it's a golden stone. Um, tied by a, a good friend of mine, a tattoo artist down in uh, Richmond, Virginia, who's also a, a really m- amazing fly fisherman, uh, a guy named Mike Rennie. And um, yeah, he uh, knocked that one out for me uh, late last year. Something I've been wanting to do for it's a long time. Cool. So it's a big, I don't know, it's, what would this be, like it's a size? life size. There's got to be one out there that It's be like a size 12 aught stonefly yeah. or something like that. So Very cool. All right. You want to talk about what you're tying today? Classic patterns. Uh, both topwater uh, Royal Coachman right now and Caddis, uh, Elk Care Caddis, and um, size 16s. Um, good indicator flies, good universal flies everywhere. Still uh, never tried west to tie here. One, but um, as John Wolf said, it's like a, a strawberry ice cream sundae or something. It's got everything uh, it, going it doesn't on. look like any insect, unlike yeah. the caddis. It's an attractor fly that fish just can't resist. It's probably the only dry I want to use for brook trout. Uh, perfect. Yeah. I, I, I fish it with a little dropper behind it. And, uh, you know, a number eight, what he's tying over there, number 18, 20 dropper. And um, great, just a deadly combination. Fantastic. So. All right, thanks for coming out. I'm Paul Blaney. Fantastic. And where are you out of? Uh, Port Republic, Maryland, Southern Maryland, Calvert County. All right. Well, thanks for making the trek today. All right. Glenn, how are you? Good. All right. So let's start talking. You want to introduce yourself? Sure. My name is Don Gratton. I'm with the uh, Northern Virginia chapter of Trital Limited. And uh, we're here at the Marine Corps Museum to do tie flies for uh, Project Healing Waters. And what are you tying up today? Well, I've been uh, making... Uh, Classic Virginia pattern. Right Classic there. Virginia pattern. Uh, what are these? Um, golden retriever. Golden retrievers. So I, that, I, th- I like them. They are really work. And uh, so that's, uh, although it wasn't on the bill of fare that they had been recommended, this is real close to a woolly bugger, which is in the yeah. same category. So that's what I've been working on. It's gonna... faster. You don't, there's no hackle on it. It just saves you a step. Exactly. It's really beautiful. Uh, it, uh, strong, in, as you said, in Virginia streams and... Uh, it's really good, and I'm going to go to the mop fly. 
no, no class, but nonetheless uh, high production. <laughs> I remember Dave Fokert tying those at Healing Waters at Walter Reed years ago. If we only had filmed it and put it up, exactly, they well, would be famous. It's a, it's the rave. Uh, it's one of the rave flies yeah. of the uh, of the year. Indeed. So that's uh, that's the game plan. So we're prepared to tie uh, whatever the. This thing might start a fire over here with the light coming in the magnifier. That's funny, but the chapter, the uh, the uh, Marine Corps uh, fly tying marathon suggested uh, a dozen flies or so. So we're uh, that's that's the game plan. So for an intermediate tire like myself, I'm uh, I need I like to have the directions as a backup as opposed to just going by memory. Absolutely. All right. Well, thanks for coming out. Let's move on down. Is this the camera? No, nope, all oh, audio. Oh, great. Hi. How's it going today? Good. Nice to see you again. Absolutely. Are you tying today? Absolutely. Great to tie for the Project Healing Water Fly Tying Marathon. Any particular patterns? I'm tying patterns at the guys can bar. Things that'll catch fish and are really super for guys that need that extra help in fishing. Oh, have you got a question behind us? Okay. Are these guys with you? No. Okay. Do you want to start again? No, we're good. No. We're good. We we'll edit it out. Yeah. So I'm tying a pattern that looks like a grasshopper. It can be used as a strike indicator, and you can pull a small midge behind it. It's a quick, easy tie, out of foam. And as you can see here, it's quick, easy, simple oh, yeah. foam. It's great for bluegills, panfish, when you take kids out on the water. Just let it sit in the water, twitch it. Before you know it, boom, bang. One of my friends caught one of the, his biggest trout on one of these things last spring. And it's a quick, easy, simple yeah, it's tie. Easy to see from a distance. Absolutely. And it's something that I put on even a additional indicator on so anyone with impaired vision or okay. has needs it will see it fantastic you like one take one there right. you go uh oh I'm gonna go put it with my kit so I don't lose it yeah alright well, thanks so much for coming out today yeah, I'm glad to see you today and I hope everything goes well today project heating waters I'm sure the guys will enjoy using these slides indeed alright thanks so much thank you and go alright what's your name I'm Ada, and I, today I'm tying Hampson's male ticklet. It's How, like a, that's probably the biggest fly being tied today. Yes. <laughs> um, it's like a crawfish, but it can catch like smallmouth bass and largemouth bass. And how old are you? I'm seven. Are you into the Shopkins? Sort of. Sort of. Okay. That's big in our house. So how long have you been tying? Only like a couple weeks. Probably I like started in February. And you're already tying that monstrosity of a meat fly? Yes. Oh, my goodness. All right. What else have you been tying? Like I tied the sand gym worm today and a lot of other stuff. Like we've tied a zebra midge and like an elk hair and like a rabbit hair, like a rabbit's ear and stuff like that. It's really fun. Do you think this fly tie material has some weird animal parts to it? Yeah. It's strange. Yeah. We used, like, we used this Malibu medium white stuff. Do you know where that comes from? No. That's from a turkey's bum. <laughs> and we used some of this, like, mange and body. That's, for, that's basically white. like a teddy bear. Yeah, it is. Oh. Um, some woolly burger, chili, and medium white. And then we used, like, this. Um, cross cut rabbit strips so that's just weird and it's green so that just makes it weirder Is that a, it's there's the uh, New Jersey rabbits yes <laughs> and you, you like the right bobbin yeah I, I like to use that, that fixed. send that in oh it got bent purposefully to make it easier to oh. um, tighten and loosen how about that yeah All right. and we have two hooks on this one we use some like five beads. You would need five beads. Are those from craft store beads? Michaels. Yes, oh, Michaels. It's, it's a pretty cool store. That's where I get my worm material from. <laughs> did you see the worms I was tying? Oh, yeah, I the did. Pink, yeah, that's called Spikies from Michaels. Oh, cool. Airy color. That's awesome. Yeah. Yeah, we have some, like, stuff over here. We have Ultra Chilling from Orvis. You can get a lot of the stuff from Orvis. All right. And do you fish too? Yes. Not a big fisher, but I like the fly time. Okay. Where do y'all live? Woodbridge. All right. You can do any shad fishing? 
We have we it will, yet. We will d- be doing it April 1st. Oh, April we 1st, okay. All right. You have a life jacket? Yes. Come up to Fletcher's. Get a boat. <laughs> we have a kayak, right? Yeah, oh, we have a kayak. yeah. A tandem. So. We'll talk about that. All right. Well, thanks so much for the interview today. Anything you want to tell people out there in podcast land? This is very crafty. Yeah. Do you have a good joke for them? You have to have a joke. What's the funny one going around school right now? Um, if somebody says something is boring, we'll say, well, maybe you're boring. It's a good one. Don't let my daughter hear that one because then she'll be telling me that all day. All right. Well, thank you so much. Thank you. All right. Let's, who, who wants to go first? No, not, I'm not it. You don't want to? Yeah. You notice how I'm getting pushed to the... Yeah. Okay. And next, then, it'll be this gentleman right there. Okay. You got them already. Oh, no, I'm not worried about that. Yeah. Okay, go ahead. Well, all right. You want to introduce yourself? Hi, I'm Julie Keene with the Project Healing Waters Quantico program. What are you tying today? I am tying a uh, woolly booger with a little bit of flash. My version of a woolly booger. Which is, uh, you know, I've got to make it a, a little crazy looking because, you know fits my personality to ad lib you gonna run out of thread today no okay. well maybe oh, oh yeah that. i see a little white behind there you also have the bent out part on your right bobbin is that for better grip to tighten it or did you just bend it by accident we bent that for a purpose so it it would um, be easier to to grab and right. tighten up so you know which way you're you need to turn this knob to tighten fantastic but so we like these this style uh, bobbin for the the guys because it's easier for them to grip and it's less cumbersome to uh, to try to put the thread mm-hmm. to thread it, the bobbin itself. Any other adaptive fly tying stuff you guys use? Oh, most definitely. We we have through Project Healing Waters. We have all kinds of stuff. Um, we have a, a hand that actually is like a, a second hand that will help them tie flies. It's a um, it's an attachment that physically goes on the vise that is magnetic, that the guys can put their hook there until they can get the hook with their other hand connected on the, the vise. It, it's, it's wonderful stuff, yes. Fantastic. Good stuff. You get ready for the Shad Run down in Fredericksburg? Oh, most definitely. We, yeah. we actually, we have an event April 15th down at uh, the Rappahannock on the Stafford side. Falmouth it, we, Flats. That's it. That's yeah. it exactly. Oh, yes. mild, mild stomping grounds from way back in the day. Really? Oh, yeah. Do I have to go look up your name? No. Never got in trouble. <laughs> oh, that's good. That's good. That's awesome. So, yes, this is... Uh, I, back when you could fish all night long there, there's no gate in the parking lot. Mm-hmm. Like You'd fish until like 3 in the morning and be stripers all in the dark. And then you just lay down on the, the beach and in your waders and put your raincoat over your head and sleep to, till sunrise. To, and then go Get go up. to it. Yeah. Go back at it. Don't do that that's, anymore. <laughs> the old days. That was after closing down, like, Jay Bryan's tap room. Oh, yeah, yeah. They, they actually have an awesome new sign on the corner of their building that, you know, I, I worked for the city for umpteen years, never saw a sign like that in all of downtown, and now I just happen to be rolling by, and I'm like, wow. When I lived down there, there was one police officer for every 200 citizens or something. Like, I'd never seen that many police officers. Per capita, we, we, were, we had things going on, yes. That's troublesome Mary Washington students. No, certainly not. Oh, is she going to grow up to be no, a... No, me. Oh, you? I don't know. Really? What are you doing, kid? I'm going to take a guy. I was uh, in the library all the whole time I Oh, that's there. good. It's very studious. Oh. So how did that help you with your career? Uh, Bio what? major. Oh, nice. Yeah. Bug man. Okay. I yeah. got you. That's perfect. Uh-oh. It's perfect. So um, has anybody... The gentleman previously explained what Project Healing Waters is all about. I've had it down. Oh, yep. wonderful. Okay, awesome. Are we going to see you at the two fly this year? Yes. Most definitely. I'll all be right. there. I'll be, uh, I'm part of headquarters, so I'll, I'll be uh, doing whatever we need to do to make sure that our 12 participants are getting what they need and having fun catching fish. And thankfully, you're, you've uh, graciously volunteered to put one of our guys in the winner's circle. So uh, that's a great thing. Let's hope it's warm this year. I hope so it's as been, well. It's been like five years since it was warm. Well, it typically, I mean, it's slowly warming up, but then we get these cold snaps. So even if it gets cold, I don't think it's going to be cold for long. Right. So I'm going to do a little help with the bugger. Can I get, show you a little trick on the next I one? I would love for you to show okay. me a little trick, yes. All right. She likes doing things her way. All right. Yeah, I'll make it easier. 
Okay. All right. Yeah. Thanks. Thank you. Eight, four, two. Eight, there we go. Two. Andy. All right, Andy's All right, we have a winner. Andy, right. come on up here. Eight, four, the two. The next drawing for uh, the last rod and reel will be at three. Yeah. yeah. Absolutely. All right, we got Bo here. How's your uh, tie-a-thon going today? Uh, the event here uh, at the Marine Corps um, Museum with the Quantico and Fort Belvoir Project Healing Waters event is going really well. It's a great tie-a-thon, raising money for Project Healing Waters, and uh, this is their second year here, and it's going really well. Going very well. We're very uh, happy with the turnout. Awesome. You've got a big event coming up in about a month. Yeah, the Virginia Fly Fishing and Wine Festival will be occurring again in Doswell on April uh, 8th and 9th. Uh, Doswell is uh, where King's Dominion is, and we're really excited. This year, uh, we're actually doubling the size of the event. Last year, we sold out uh, all of our space uh, very early into the event, and this year, we're running the entire building. So we have people, individual attendees coming from as far away as Rhode Island, and uh, Georgia, so about nine or ten hours in every direction. So we're pretty happy with the response from the public. The lady down there in the pink turtleneck, she's why I can't go. She booked us a trip to Montreal that week. Well, I can I'm I can understand bummed. that. Well, you gotta you know you gotta keep Mama happy. I can certainly understand that. But we are we're looking forward. Uh, we've got some new sponsors. Uh, one of our new sponsors this year is Steam Bell Brewery out of uh, Chesterfield, Virginia. And uh, they're the official beer now uh, for this year's Virginia Fly Fishing and Wine Festival. And they're going to be sponsoring the uh, 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 festival after party, which will be on the festival grounds. We're happy to have a lot of our big-name speakers coming back. Lefty will be there and Bob Clouser and Wanda Taylor and Oliver White will be there this year. Harry Robertson and quite a few other people. We're, we're excited about it. And a lot of new vendors from out of state. Lodges from as far away as Canada will be there this year, and uh, it's going to be it's going to be a good event. We're really excited about it. Yeah, thank uh, Rick Pope for the rods he donated today. Too. Yeah, well, you know Temple Fork Outfitters is always interested in uh, getting new people involved in the sport, and they're very supportive of uh, of uh, Project Healing Waters. Rick Pope is a huge supporter of getting new people uh, involved in the sport, and they've been a, a big sponsor of the Virginia Fly Fishing and Wine Festival for a long time and he comes every year from Dallas uh, to, to the Virginia Fly Fishing and Wine Festival so if you're interested in seeing the latest Temple Fork Outfitter rods uh, and reels come on out to Virginia Fly Fishing and Wine Festival if you need more information you can go to the uh, website which is www.vaflyfishingfestival.org vaflyfishingfestival.org Fantastic Bill Great. Right, Thanks, Rob. See you again. Okay, man. Have Thanks. Good we'll see you next month. Cheers. Craig Conover, oh. I'm the... Oh. All right. How's it going? Good afternoon. I'm Craig Conover. I'm the president of the Falmouth Flats Fly Fishers out of Fredericksburg, Virginia. Today I'm tying up um, some gurgler patterns. Um, this is a floating pattern originally tied by Art um, Gart side. So it's got a little synthetic hair for the tail, tie in some... Um, little flash and it's made with craft foam so I've tied these on a size 2 hook and put some rubber legs on to give it a little more action these are great for uh, bass and panfish in this area uh, warm water fishing also you can tie them up in other colors this one's green um, bright orange is a great color um, dark blue to match the uh, dragonfly patterns and then also uh, white's popular color for or tan for the shrimp patterns on the uh, ocean fishing in the uh, flats all right what well, tell us about falmouth flats and so falmouth flats fly fishers we started around 2000 and a group of guys that have been fishing for the striper and the sam or the Shad runs there in Fredericksburg as they come in for their spring spawning runs got together and we developed a club and we're a international federation of fly fishers chapter uh, locally there in Fredericksburg. We meet the third Thursday of the month uh, at the United Methodist Church downtown Fredericksburg 
from 6 to 7 p.m. we do fly tying, and then from 7 to 9 we do a presentation and a general club meeting. This past week we did a presentation on shad and um, striped bass fishing there in the Rappahannock. That should be started any day. Oh, yeah. Beat this week's We've part. already caught a few of the shad in the Rappahannock. They're nice. right next to the Route 1 bridge. My old stomping grounds. Yeah. Yeah. It's right. a lot of fun. And where can we find Palmas Flats Fly Fishers? Uh, online or on, um, we've got a Facebook page or if you go to, um, if you Google Falmouth Flats Fly Fishers, we've got a website and will give you information. We've got a, a forum out there that's got some historical information. In that. an old post of mine. Oh, yeah. <laughs> a long time ago. Yep. We still got quite a few posts out there. All right. Well, thanks for coming out today. Thanks. Well, let's talk about that. You want to introduce yourself? Hey, I'm Bruce Matthews, and uh, I'm currently living in Northern Virginia. And what are you tying up today? A, uh, what do they exactly call this thing? A pheasant tail and partridge. There you go. It's a wet fly. Killer for steelhead. Well, it's good for, if you believe this article that was in Fly Fisherman, it's good for most anything. Just about. Uh, the uh, fellow right there, how exactly, do you know how to Yvonne pronounce it? Chouinard. Yeah. He's the one who wrote the article. It says he even caught bonefish on it. I wouldn't be surprised. I wouldn't be surprised. It's a pretty good wet fly. Yeah. Uh, I am getting back in the tying. You've been on hiatus? Well, I uh, hey. renovated my basement and all my fly tying stuff got put up till I could get it, Uh-oh. you know. And then uh, it all changed in uh, storage and location. Who are we talking to here? Is this your podcast? This is the podcast. You're on iTunes right now. Oh. Well, you will be when this is uploaded. Anyway, we're having fun today. Uh, It's good to be out here making bait for people that need to have somebody to help them out some. Yeah. How you doing? You fishing now? I see you. Waiting for the shad run to start. Oh, I thought it started. Did it stop when it got cold? It's, it needs to be hot for me to start working it. No going out in 40 now, degree, 50 degree days. You put your boat in? Nope, all from shore. You're from shore? Yeah. I got a new boat since we went out. Oh, you got rid of that double ender thing? No, a drunk, oh, that, uh, a drunk lady drove into it, totaled it. Oh, uh, what? on the street. Parked on the street and she... <laughs> she T-boned it going 65. She bent the thing in the, like a V-shape. Did uh, her insurance or your insurance yep. cover enough to replace? They, they bought me a stealth craft instead, so we'll have to go out in the new boat. Well, I have a new, uh, new to me anyway, square end canoe. Okay. And uh, in December, I went and found a uh, really nice boat trailer up in Delaware, so uh, I don't have to lift the damn thing on and off the roof of the car, you know. Oh, and, absolutely. Uh, I got a 50-pound electric motor, but the next purchase might be about a three-horsepower gas. What you have on the back of that? 9.9. Nine. That was a pretty big boat, though. You probably needed 9.9. Nine to... Yeah. The new one's rated for 40 horsepower, though. You go water skiing. <laughs> you hurt yourself with that one. Oh, I won't. My wife will ski. I'll drive. Uh, but I got to get the new canoe set up and uh, get down to the Potomac. So. Absolutely. Put that in, do some shad fishing. You know, I don't even know where you'd launch for that. Shoot me an email. I'll get you spots. I mean, where is it near? Is there a spot above the airport? Nope. Not if you've got a trailer. If you can roof it, you can put it at Fletcher's. I mean, I could effectively uh, put it on uh, wheels on the side yeah. and uh, pull it off the trailer and roll it somewhere yeah. from there. Shoot me an email. We'll talk about it. All right. Thanks for coming out. Like I said, I had to dab you. Yeah. All right. Good to be here. <laughs> Want to do an introduction? Sure. So um, this is Gabriella Hoffman. I'm a media strategist and an avid angler. And what are you just hanging out today? Because we're not you're not tying a whole lot yet. No. I did, when we did the December 2015 candy cane fly tie. So it's been a while since I've last tied. But I'm coming here to observe and I wanted to see what an actual Project Healing Waters event looks like. Because the organization does a lot of great stuff. And to see it in action is something I've always wanted to do for a while and now I get to see it and um, it's a huge turnout and it's it's great to observe yeah yeah someone will get you on a vice here yeah yeah Richie when he comes back sure Richie sure. In the, so that guy in the checkered shirt mm-hmm. he's opening up a new fly shop so oh wonderful in the area 
Does he need help with any media strategy? Talk to him. Yeah. Speaking of media strategy, where, yes. where can one find you online? I am on Instagram at Gabriella underscore Hoffman, Twitter at Gabby underscore Hoffman. And uh, you can read my blog, and I write for The Hill, The Resurgent, so I do a lot of fishing and hunting policy. I'll talk about that and write about that because people don't know about certain <laughs> legislation that goes about, and so kind of giving that to people so that they know how their politicians are voting in terms of banning lead tackle or banning this access to fishing or access to public lands and things like that in terms of hunting and fishing access. So trying to cover that because many people don't think that subject is not sexy enough to discuss. <laughs> and so I figured why not talk about it? It's an interesting topic and people want to learn more about it. Absolutely. All right. Well, I'm not going to take up too much of your time. You need to walk around and talk. Sure. All right. Thank, Thank you, you Rob. Yeah. Thank you for joining us for the Fly Fishing Consultant Podcast. For more information or to contact Rob, please go to www.robsnowwhite.com And if you lack the strength of your own Honey, hold out your hands And take it from an old man This has been a production of Freestone Media at freestone.com